Well, hello everyone. John and Carol Arnott here, and uh, we want to give you a special invitation to come to our Catch the Fire conference this September. We have an amazing lineup. We of people, do, Carol. and we're I mean, really is, excited. This, I'm telling you. This is a little commercial that John and Carol Arnott made in 2015 to promote their upcoming conference. And in case you don't know these two, they are at the very heart of the whole revival movement of the last 30 years. Along with people like Randy Clark and Rodney Howard Brown, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, and a handful of others. Uh, they have the church in Toronto where the so-called Toronto Blessing took place in the 1990s. It's incredible yeah. how Kenneth Copeland is coming. The exact spiritual DNA of Jesus. You're not a little like him. You are exactly like him. That clip of Kenneth Copeland is from one of the two videos that are still on the Catch the Fire YouTube channel for the Arnott's Church. Now, this guy, Chris Valentin, has also been a guest speaker at the Catch the Fire Toronto Church, and he has a long connection going back to the beginning of Bethel's transformation from a traditional Assemblies of God church to a what we would call a New Apostolic Reformation or Signs and Wonders church. Um, there's a real, uh, just a mantle and anointing on this house and this team, and we trace our roots back to here, so it's a real honor to be, to be here um, you know, you probably know the story, but Bill and Benny came here many, many years ago and got really touched by the Lord. What I want you to see in this video is that the ideas of Kenneth Copeland sound almost identical to the ideas of Chris Valentin, the little God's heresy, the idea that Christ came to bring us into an even greater level of glory and into our destiny, not that Christ came to simply forgive us of our sins because of our unholiness. It's the gospel flipped on its head. Why is it when you look at Jesus, it's like you're looking in a mirror? Because you were born in his image. You were created in his image and likeness. Do you understand that? So Jesus, God was the painter, you're the painting, and Jesus was the model. The emphasis that you hear in Chris Valentin and in Kenneth Copeland is always an emphasis on how good we are and how we don't even know our potential. We don't know our identity. We don't know all that we're capable of and that Christianity is actually a tool for us to realize that potential. It has almost nothing to do with Christ redeeming us with his precious blood on the cross. When you look at Jesus, it's like looking in a mirror. He's your twin brother. And so the Lord said to me, you're a pauper who has become a king, and it's time for you to change. You're not a little like Jesus. You are exactly like Jesus. We met Kenneth in Rome. And the reason they went to Rome was to meet with the Pope. You can see them there on the left, along with Kenneth Copeland, James Robeson, and some others. But anyway, we went and we had three hours with Pope Francis. But, and, and it was a wonderful thing. But you know something? One of the highlights, if not the highlight for Carol and I... Yeah was actually meeting Kenneth Copeland. It was. This was part of a group of ecumenical, charismatic leaders. And when Kenneth Copeland came back, this is what he told his audience about the results of their meeting. To the parties involved, this essentially resolves the conflict over the nature of justification, which was at the root of the Protestant Reformation. The protest is over. Yes. last year and had a really good connection really really appreciated him really loved we him did. it's amazing that he said yes oh ho ho kenneth Make plans this September, Toronto, Catch the Fire conference right here, and it's going to be earth-shaking. 
That's what and I think. And you are never going to be the same again. Oh, you got in there, all that, that name it, claim it bunch, blab it, grab it. Well, yeah. I named it, claimed it, blabbed it, grabbed it, and I've had it for 40 years. You know that you are not a sinner saved by grace? You are not an old sinner saved by grace. You are not a sinner saved by grace? That's the biggest lie in Christendom. You were an old sinner and you got saved by grace. Now get rid of those sin tags. I mean, right now, don't you ever say them again. If you believe you're a sinner, you'll sin by faith. <laughs> now, let me make it clear. You were a sinner before you met Jesus. So I, I understand that. I understand you didn't do this to you, but how many of you, you understand that when Jesus died on the cross, he didn't just die to forgive your sins? Remember Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You were born for glory. When Jesus died on the cross, he died to restore you to the glory you fell short of. Glory to God, hallelujah. You were born for glory. Come on, Lake. You were born to be amazing. Remember Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short of the Glory of God. You were born for glory. When Jesus died on the cross, he died to restore you to the glory you fell short of. This is a really stunning twisting of Scripture. Shocking, stunning, blasphemous. Let's read the whole passage. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in His divine forbearance He had passed over former sins. Chris Valentin has twisted this passage to be about us receiving the glory that is due to us. This is quite literally an anti-Christian twisting of the Word of God. Lord, we just say Shabbat right now in Jesus' name. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you with every fiber of my being. Why is it when you look at Jesus, it's like you're looking in a mirror? I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because you were born in his image. You were created in his image and likeness. Do you understand that? So Jesus, God was the painter. You're the painting, and Jesus was the model. When you look at Jesus, it's like looking in a mirror. He's your twin brother. I'd like to quote Heidi Shaba. You were born again of the Spirit. You were born of the Spirit. You were born exactly with the same spiritual DNA as Jesus. You were born with the DNA of God Almighty. You're not a little like Jesus. You are exactly like Jesus. You're not a little like Jesus. You are exactly like Jesus. You're born of his spirit. You have his name. You have his word. You are not only in his image. You are in his likeness. As I hope you can clearly see, Kenneth Copeland is not teaching that we have the righteousness of Christ imputed to us. No, we actually are like God himself. And to make that even more clear, here's the other session where he teaches that the incarnation of Christ in the womb of Mary is the exact same thing as what happens to Christians when they are born again. Mm -hmm. Now, you and I, when we were born again, we were born of incorruptible seed and that lived by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Well, when we were born again, that, that, the faith of Jesus himself was imparted in that seed. Just to be clear, this is that word of faith belief that faith is not something that we have in God but faith is actually something that has its own substance. It's, it's like its own power. It's almost like electricity. And so he's claiming that Jesus had faith. But actually, when 
we hear faith being talked about in the Bible, it's faith in God, not faith as its own entity. Because he was born of the word. He was born from on high. He was born of the spirit. The word of God in Mary's womb was the seed that took upon itself flesh. Now, that same seed of the word of God, the very same faith action took place when you believed the word of God and you said, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that hovered over Mary and brought Jesus into this world hovered over your body your old spirit died the death of the cross who that shouting ground glory to God died the death of the cross and there was conceived in you a new creation that never existed before that moment. A new person made the righteousness of God. The exact spiritual DNA of Jesus. You're not a little like him. You are exactly like him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my, my. You're not a little like him. You are exactly like him. Hallelujah. Oh, my, my. So there are two videos of Kenneth Copeland at this conference. This one and then this one, which was the next day. And he made a point in both sessions to tell everybody that they were exactly like God or they were exactly like Jesus. Now here's an example of Kenneth Copeland teaching people that God always answers our prayers with a yes. And he has to twist the Bible in order to make that point. Well, Brother Copeland, you know, sometimes God's answer is no. That's a lie. Huh? I didn't stammer, did I? It's a lie. Well, Brother Copeland, I never heard anything like that. Well, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, under the glory of God by us. Now, if you're not standing on a promise, he doesn't have to say no, because you ain't going to get it anyway. <laughs> Jesus did not do anything on this earth as the Son of God except go to the cross. Everything he did, he did as the Son of Adam, anointed of the Holy Ghost. He was and still is the example son. We're supposed to be acting like him, talking like him. We get his same results. Now here I'm going to play a clip from 2020 when Bill Johnson was the honored guest at Kenneth Copeland's big conference and he's teaching the exact same thing. It's my conviction that Jesus didn't do any miracles as God. He did them as a man submitted to God. And the reason he did so was to give us an example that we could follow. If he performed all of his miracles as God, I'm still impressed. It's just, I can't follow that. I'm reduced to an observer. I stand back and I say, my goodness, he did it again. He parted the sea. He brought water out of a rock. Look at him. He's in the cloud of the presence. And I stand back and I'm in awe. But something happens when I find out that Jesus did what he did as a man. I'm no longer content to stay where I am. I must pursue the example that's been set for me. 
There is a, there, just the example of Jesus becoming a man, still entirely God, and I, I don't understand how to define this well, but becoming a man yielded to the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit that was released upon him at his water baptism, that model makes it impossible for me to see that and stay where I'm at. That model makes it impossible for me to see that and stay where I'm at. Except that you are staying where you're at, Bill Johnson. You're just giving another speech about doing greater works than Jesus, just like Kenneth Copeland, Todd White, and a bunch of other people in your camp. And this gullible audience is applauding you for giving a speech as if you were doing something much more than that. It probably helps that you take such long pauses to make your words seem more profound. Holy discontent is imparted to me in the moment that I understand. He actually restricted his lifestyle to what could be done by any other human being that was fully yielded to God, fully filled with the Holy Spirit and without sin. Everything he did, he did in that context, he did without sin. He was tempted in all manner as we are, yet without sin. But the other element is he was also entirely filled with and empowered by the Holy Spirit. So you and I are here today washed in the blood of Jesus and without sin. The only other question that remains is how yielded to the Holy Spirit am I willing to be? Well, like Copeland, how can I ever act like Jesus? Well, there you get the, your, your fear is talking. On the first day that Kenneth Copeland was there to speak, he also volunteered himself to give a little speech before they took up the offering. So Copeland goes on for 28 minutes before finally getting to the place where they pray over the offering. So he talks about the blessings of Abraham and sowing seeds and all of the things that you would normally hear a Word of Faith person say. Here are just a few clips. We're receiving the evening offering, which gives you an opportunity to raise your income. <laughs> all these things, all of it, shall be added to you. You can't keep sowing the same thing and get a different harvest. That, 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 that's the definition of insanity. You can't do it. You can't keep sowing corn and get wheat. No, amen. Your words are seeds. The sower sows the word. These are they by the wayside where the word is sown. So, Understand and, and make, put this right up, right, right up in, in front of your thinking. They said, increase our faith. He said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you would say. In other words, you sow it. The parable of the mustard seed in Mark chapter 4 has nothing to say about planting seeds or sowing seeds so that you can get a better harvest or return for your, for your money. It's about the kingdom of God, which has nothing to do with the money that he's talking about. And then he jumps to Luke chapter 17, where the disciples say, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. He skipped everything in that verse after the word say. This is the very definition of a false teacher at a false church. He twists the word of God and they like it. They want more. God blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I remember when I first found out that the, the, <laughs> the faith and the blessing of Abraham was mine. I was so broke I couldn't pay attention. But I, 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 I found this <laughs> glory to God. I came running in there to glory. I said, glory. Look at this. We've been rich this whole time and we're just now finding out about it. <laughs> now, he became poor for our sakes. That wasn't while he's in his earth and ministry. Jesus was not a poor man. No, no, no. Poor people don't need a treasurer. And you begin to sow seed and expect his word to come to pass. Now he, look at this, 
He that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. It didn't say hungry, it said for your food. And multiply your seed some. Multiply your seed some. Amen. Uh, And it's happened in our church just recently. It's happened in Bill Winston's church several times recently. Amen. We're getting reports of it again. Where people say, look, my goodness. Called the bank, said, uh, somebody made a mistake over there. I, I got $20,000 in my account. Now, I'm telling you an actual, actual account. Now, I'm telling you an actual, actual account. I got $20,000 in my account I didn't put in there. And, and they said, well, our records, our records show that you did. So she went to Brother Winston and she said, Pastor, what should I do with it? He said, did you call the bank? Yes, I did. What did he say? She told him what he said. He said, what's the matter with you, girl? Spend it. How do you know that's a true story? Because Kenneth Copeland assures us that it's a true story. So go ahead, start thinking about all the tens of thousands of dollars that might just show up in your bank one day and get your checkbooks or your credit cards ready because we're about to take the offering. Claim your tithing rights. I'm a tither. You've been rebuked for my sake. You take your hands off my blessing. Amen. Dance before the Lord. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about when you come to church. Hey, come on, man. It ain't no sacrifice of praise when you're dancing around in here. It's fun. And like I said, you can dance around in here and just, you know, act a complete fool. And everybody, they'll say, hey, <laughs> let's act like a fool with him. <laughs> but it's when you do that out in the front yard. <laughs> and it's when you begin to dance before the Lord with all, every fiber of your being. <laughs> Glory to God, hallelujah. Come on, Lake. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you with every fiber of my being. I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Pastors, that's the way you pray for a $25 million church building. Without debt. The Bible said, and God laughs at the devil. Well, have we not been raised up to sit with him in heavenly places? Have we or not? That means if we sit with him, we can laugh with him. You just started. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha on the devil. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Glory to God, Satan. You said I wasn't going to get my healing. I got my healing 2,000 years ago. Jesus already got it for me. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. What are you talking to me about? You telling me my children are not going to get saved? Ha 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 I know that you probably feel like you've been spiritually overfed by Kenneth Copeland at this point, but wait, there's more. I want you to hear the kind of wisdom coming from the mouth of Chris Valentin at a similar conference at the same place three years earlier. I don't know how sovereignty and free will and all that works, you know, free will. I'm not, I'm not a theologian, I'm a prophet, so I can say things that aren't even scriptural, and you just like, Madre, yeah. So my wife's playing keyboard, a little church, 200 people in a theater, and Bill's sharing a little bit just about his experience. And while he's sharing, all of a sudden, I'm, I'm watching Bill, my wife's kind of off to the side, 
and I, I hear the, the keyboard go, <laughs> and I look over, and my wife has fallen over the keyboard, and her chest is on the keyboard, and she's going like this, trying to get the off button. And Bill walks over and shuts the keyboard off, and my wife's all. I carried her out. I remember specifically because during football season, it wrecked a perfectly good football season. My wife used to wait on us during football, and then she just laid on the floor in the front room while we watched football, laughing, even when, my, it was, you know, even when there was like fumbles on our team. And, so, <laughs> She was drunk for a while, <laughs> months. The story of the prodigal son, you know, he left his father's house, he asked for his inheritance, remember this? The father doesn't give him an inheritance, he only gives him money. The boy leaves, he spends all his money on prostitutes, remember the story? And he's hanging out at the pig farm. This is what it says in the original Greek. It says, and when he came to himself, he went home. When he came to himself, what's he, what happened? He lost his identity. When he came to himself, he said, I'm way too awesome to be acting like this. I'm going back to my dad's house. Creation is groaning so that you will be released into glory. Glory isn't a place, it's a condition. You know, sometimes when things sound too good to be true, they're true. You were born for glory. You were born to be amazing. Well, I don't feel glorious. Well, you believe a lie. The exact spiritual DNA of Jesus. You're not a little like him. You are exactly like him. I think like God. I, think like God. I, have, the power of God. I have the power of God. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. And, the, and, I and I sit on the throne with God. I co-reign co with, with Christ, and I'm already, I'm already seated in heavenly places. In heavenly places. Woo! <laughs> you feel that just lifting. It's lifting.